Welcome back into the Pick and Roll NBA podcast with Jet and Sap, presented by Full Press Coverage. Sap, today is a dark day. I don't know if you know why, but I'm I'm very depressed. Do you want to do you want to stab a guess as to why I'm so down? You're very depressed. Well, it can't be because Marcus Smart signed an extension. That would be cause for celebration. No, that's right? good news. That's good. That's news. good news. Maybe for you, but not for me or other people that follow the Celtics. But yeah, we'll get to that momentarily. Why is it a dark day today? It's August 19th. Is it? Is that the date or the 18th or whatever it is? I know uh, it is. It is the 18th. Yeah. OK, we're heading towards the end of summer. Um, I no longer on our Zoom and YouTube feed. No longer do you stare at some sort of caricature that doesn't really exist. Now you get to see my that's another good thing. Face. That's that's a good thing. Yes, that's I why like I'm a, sad. I, I look like a young Lee, Lee Iacocca, um, the former head of Chrysler, who's a paisan. Um, trying to think, why would you be sad today? I'm not sure. Is this like some movie came out that didn't do well? Nope. Nope. Sap the, and I'm, you know, we're good friends. I'm a little upset that you don't know that the Celtics losing the summer league championship really hit me hard. Ah, that's right. You know what? Cause I was, I, I'm sure you were hoping for title 18. Cause then you'd be one up on the Lakers if they won that I was, game I, against Sacramento. Believe me, Seth, I had, I was ready to go. I had those, the little things that you pop and spray confetti. Yeah. And I had some champagne in, in my fridge. And so, I, yeah, Sep, I thought we were better friends than this. I thought that you would. I You didn't even I reach out so. to me last night after they lost I know. the Summer League title game. I know. But you do have Davion Mitchell on Sacramento, who's becoming one of your favorite players. So there's that, right? I mean, yeah, they lost no, I'm happy. A- I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him. But Sep, I mean, I, I really would have a text, a call, an email, nothing from you after last night. And I was I was down uh, about it. Well, I, was, you I know really. What? I was, I was ready for Banner 18. You were ready to, to hang Banner 18 and be one up. Well, on it's the just Lakers. such an opportunity squandered, Sap. I mean, yeah, you wh- get you work you hard. You put all the time in the gym. You're you're in the title game and they just didn't play their best basketball. Yeah. And you lose to Sacramento, who's now won it twice. Right. So I guess that means. Yes, that's important. Very important. Very that important. Uh, Sacramento wins. That That's one of those things that, you know, if you're an organization like Sacramento, who hasn't been in the postseason for like 13 years. Yeah, maybe you hang that banner. Yes. Why they, not? Hey, listen, I mean, uh, they get they gave them they, they gave them hats. They have a trophy. They have a freaking MVP trophy for the uh, mm-hmm. for the summer league title game. Yeah. So you yeah. know, I might as well hang the banner. But yes, yeah, it was it was a it was a tough it was a tough night. I was expecting was. the Celtics to run rough shot through the Kings. Peyton Pritchard, my guy, played too much. He gave up away too much at the pro am where he's putting up ninety two points. And, uh, you know, he just didn't have enough left in the tank last night. And, uh, you know, Romeo Langford also didn't play because he can't even stay healthy for summer league, which, you know, is problematic. Yeah, he can't stay healthy, right? He's not the most durable guy. He's not to be confused with AC Green, who played like 915 consecutive games with the Lakers. Uh, That's frustrating because, again, he was a mid first round pick and they've got nothing out of him. Maybe Aaron Neesmith, who was also drafted in the middle of the first round, will will be of value to the Celtics, whether it's on the court or in the trade market. But, yeah, uh, condolences, Jet. I I, I feel your pain. You know, now Skip Bayless will put forward that that's yet another thing LeBron James never did was win um, the rookie league title or or be named MVP of the rookie league championship game. That's another thing that LeBron has not accomplished in his storied career. So I I, I think it's a demerit against him. It's a big glaring hole in his resume. Ooh, That's what huge, it is. Sap. And huge. the Celtics, I mean, they had a chance to get really on the right track, but they uh, too many turnovers last night. Sap, that was the story of the game. I know that well, you just, were watching intently. It's yes, I was too many I was turnovers. Glued to it. Yeah, I was I was glued to it. I, I'm, the funny thing is you were glued to it watching it because I'm sure you've watched almost every summer league game. I've tuned in every now and then. I do like Davion Mitchell. I think we're, we're both fans of his. I think he's going to yep. be a, a star in the league. I wouldn't say superstar, but, you know, it's unfortunate that he's going to a place like Sacramento. Maybe they can build something like if he had been fortunate enough to get drafted by a team that was a playoff team or contending team. What a perfect fit he'd be on on a team like, say, Phoenix or pick another contending team. He would have been perfect there because he could kind of work his way into the lineup and, and be a nice bench piece. But, yeah, congratulations to the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, uh, you know, they were Luke Walton was on hand last night. Uh, he wasn't coaching. He was in the yep. stands scouting his guys. I'm sure he was very excited. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a dark day for Celtics fans. But, yep. uh, 
you know, it, we, we live in you. We learned sap from, uh, from summer league. And for the most part, I like what I saw from the Celtics, except for Romeo Langford again, who can't stay healthy. Your guy, Yam Madar looks like he's uh, not going to make the team. Uh, sorry. Mm. I'm sorry for you. Um, sorry. And yep. uh, he's going to, he just signed a three-year deal with some European team. So maybe he'll try again next summer, but uh in the meantime, we can talk about other things besides Summer League because it is over. The NBA schedule has been announced. Sap, I don't know that's what you were actually paying attention to because it had to do with your guy LeBron James. And if something in the NBA isn't talking about LeBron James, it's out of sight, out of mind for you. Yes, that's all I c- concentrate on. <laughs> um, you know, if something happens with LeBron James, I have to jump into the fray and uh, let my opinion known. Yeah, the, the schedule came out, which... Uh, it's always kind of fun. I mean, we know that you're going to play X number of games against certain teams. You're going to have a home right. and away with the Western Conference and yada, yada, yada. And it's back to normal this year unless there's, you know, uh, more of a pandemic. And who the hell knows with that? But, you know, the season starts on the 19th of October, ends on the 10th of April. So more of that classic six month schedule with 82 games. So kind of back to normal in the NBA. But we always kind of look at the Christmas Day games because, Although the season is going to start on October 19th, the, the big kickoff is Christmas Day because October, November, you still got the NFL in high gear. You got college football. You've got the World Series in October, if anybody's paying attention. And it really kicks off Christmas Day. That's like the real start of the NBA season, even though it's nine weeks into the season. So it's always interesting to see who plays. This will be LeBron James' 16th consecutive Christmas that he'll be playing on. So he is as dependable as Santa Claus on Christmas day. Yeah, that is, man, that is, that is incredible. That's ridiculous. I mean, yeah. the guy that just never gets to spend Christmas with his family, but you mm-hmm. know, that's part of the, the give and take of being, you know, super, super rich and super, super famous and super, super good at basketball. But anyways, he, let's get into the playing, schedule. He's playing at home though. So that's always a good thing. That's I'm nice. sure he, he uses nice considerable way to make sure that, well, Red Auerbach always wanted the Celtics to play on the road because he didn't want, you know, all the employees having to work that day and burden his fans with showing up to a game at uh, the old Boston Garden. So whenever the Celtics played on Christmas Day, and they were always playing on Christmas Day because they were, you know, along with the Lakers, the two biggest teams, he wanted them to play on the road. It always felt like the Celtics were playing at Madison Square Garden on Christmas Day. That, that just seemed like every single year or maybe in Philadelphia, you know, against some Eastern Conference team. But LeBron will be at home so he can spend time with the family and then uh, get over and uh, kick some butt against the Brooklyn Nets. All right. So uh, uh, the opening day game, Sap, on October 19th, as you uh, alluded to, uh, are, we got two games, the Nets and the Bucks. And that's going to be on TNT. That's obviously a really high profile matchup, a rematch of the semifinals in the East. I mm-hmm. think people believe they're the two best teams in the Eastern conference, the defending champions, obviously. And then the, the, the second part of that double header is uh, the Warriors are going to take on your Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James. The Warriors will be supposedly getting Clay Thompson back. I think he should be good to go by the time we haven't heard definitively, but, uh, that should be a good game as well, Sap. So uh, are you okay with those being the uh, the opening day games? Makes the most sense, right? The three biggest stars in the NBA remain LeBron, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. Now, Giannis, I think, is the best player in the league. And, and by winning a championship and in the method that he did that, I think he deserves that title. He's still not the biggest star in the league, but obviously the Bucs are the defending champions. So they're going to be on opening night at home able to hoist the banner, give out the rings and really celebrate what they accomplished in that six game victory over the Phoenix sun. So yeah, that makes the most sense. Uh, you know, rematch of, of that great semifinal series between the nets and bucks. And look, anytime you can put the Lakers on and anytime you can put the warriors on provided you got LeBron and Steph Curry on the court, that's uh, pretty much a, a, a winning situation for the NBA and the networks. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that those ones make sense. Uh, the Celtics open the following day in New York against the Knicks. Uh, that is at 730 on Wednesday, the 20th. And the Nuggets play the Suns in an interesting game uh, on mm-hmm. that one. And then everybody else is is playing. Uh, Sap, let's go to these Christmas Day games, because those are, like you said, kind of it's almost the season starts, obviously, in October. But that's when people really start to pay attention mm-hmm. is around Christmas. Um and we've got, they got a really good slate of, uh, of five games on, uh, on Christmas Day, Sap. 
starting with uh, Trey Young's return to Madison Square Garden. The Hawks face the Knicks at 12 p.m. on Christmas Day. Uh, I think that's a great game to be the first game showcasing the Knicks with Kemba and a little bit of a new look Knicks team, a resurgent Knicks team, and the guy who tortured them in the playoffs, the new Reggie Miller, if you will, and Trey Young. Um, so it's, I, I, I expect the Hawks to get a lot more national TV games this year. Sure, because Trey Young is an emerging star. They're a fun team to watch. It's a good market. And the Knicks generally, if they're decent enough, will be in this slot. They generally kick off Christmas Day with the noon game. It's kind of built into when you have so many people, whether it be corporate offices or legal offices, you can get to the game early and then you're done at 2.30 and then you can spend Christmas Day with the family. So this is something to look forward to. Uh, I don't know if either team will go as far next year as they went last year. I mean, Atlanta made it to the conference finals. I don't expect that to happen again this year because we both agree that Brooklyn and Milwaukee are better than Atlanta. We think Miami may have surpassed them and Philadelphia, if they can figure out what to do with Ben Simmons, probably still better than Atlanta, even though Atlanta beat them in the second round and the Knicks, I think they kind of come back to mediocrity this year, although they did add Kemba Walker and Evan Fournier, a couple of former Celtics. So at least, you know, they kind of went in to try add talent, but this should be a, an interesting game. Look, it's, a, I know it's a cliche to say it's always better to have the Knicks as a competent team in the league. I, I agree with that. It's not necessary. I mean, the Knicks haven't been good for a long time and the league has grown incredibly over the last 20 years without the Knicks, but it, it's kind of fun to have them there. It's a great basketball city and, and uh, this should be a good game to kick off the proceedings. Yeah. Then that one is followed by uh, the Celtics heading to Milwaukee to take on the defending champs. Uh, Obviously, the Celtics uh, still have star power. Jason Tatum is one of the most popular players in the league. Jalen Brown, very popular mm -hmm. player, too. And the Celtics are still one of the most popular teams in the NBA. So despite what we may think about them, they're still relevant enough to warrant a Christmas Day game. And obviously, you knew the Bucs were going to be playing on Christmas Day because they're the defending champions and they get to spend Christmas with their families because it's a home game for them. Yeah, it's interesting here, Jet, because normally the defending champ will be in either the five or eight o'clock game. Those are the two marquee games. Milwaukee still doesn't have the nat nat natural national appeal that say the Lakers or now the Nets with Kevin Durant or the Warriors with Steph Curry have. Uh, and you, you've seen this even throughout the playoffs, the Bucks independently aren't a great draw. I, a lot of their games were marquee games of the playoffs because they were playing the Nets in the second right. round. And then of course, once you get to the conference finals, those games are already slated to be nine o'clock games or eight 30 games on whether it's ESPN or TNT. It's surprising that the 76ers aren't in here, but the Celtics still have a bigger reach than the 76ers. And this should be an interesting game. And it'll be a good benchmark to see exactly where the Celtics are two months into the season, if they're going to be a true contender or they're going to be closer to the seven seed, which they were last year. But again, a nice national audience to, to take a look at Giannis and, and, you know, two months into the season, maybe strengthens that hold on being the, the best player in the league. Yeah. I'm a little surprised that the five o'clock game, which is the, uh, the, the, the following one uh, isn't more of a big time matchup. I mean, listen, it's golden state at Phoenix. It's a good matchup. Right. I, I don't think either of these teams will be in the Western conference finals. So uh, I, I just, I don't think it's as sexy as, as I'm a little surprised they didn't have Milwaukee play uh, Phoenix here as a finals rematch. Yeah, that would have been interesting, right? You know, just do that and, and, you know, go into conference rather than within the conference and, you know, golden state still has a lot of pull in this league, especially we expect Clay Thompson to be back. Who knows? You may have Ben Simmons in uniform for the golden state warriors by then. So that would be an interesting note, but Milwaukee just still doesn't have that national appeal. And, and again, yeah, this Phoenix, <sighs> Probably not. I mean, it's look they, in the pecking order in the NBA, it, it's more about the players than the teams. I mean, if LeBron James yeah. played on the Denver Nuggets, they'd be must watch TV, right? If Steph Curry was playing on the Indiana Pacers, you know, they'd be on the maximum amount of times on national TV. Sure. So it's more about the players than anything. That's why I, I think even when you look at opening night, the three biggest stars in the league are LeBron, Durant, Steph. And also they're the three. Yep players that are already exalted like you know look Giannis is going to be a hall of famer Westbrook's going to be a hall of famer Harden Kyrie pick whatever players you want but those three guys 
are already among the all-time greats. I mean, heck, I think LeBron's the greatest player ever. Durant's like on the precipice of, of joining the top 10, and Steph's right there around the top 20 all time. So they're the three biggest stars in the league. So that's why you see them kind of crammed in here. Sure. Um, so I think that that's what you're seeing. And, and, and look, Steph against... Chris Paul is going to be interesting. Booker against Clay Thompson could be interesting. You know, Draymond battling um, DeAndre Ayton. That could be a, a nice matchup. And again, we don't know what Golden State's going to do in the offseason. Uh, the wild card could be Ben Simmons there. But it's just Golden State is still a bigger draw than the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, I, I mean, they are. I, I, I can't disagree with you there, um, especially because, you know, the Bucks are still looked at as Giannis and a bunch of other guys, even though we saw what Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton are mm-hmm. capable of. They're you know, Steph is still the biggest star of those guys. Clay Thompson still and Draymond Green are still more household names than Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday. That's just that's just Absolutely. the way it is. Um, but uh, but so that would be I think it'll be a good game. Golden State Phoenix. Um, and then the the marquee game that everybody wants to see at eight o'clock is uh, Brooklyn goes to L.A. to take on the uh, the Lakers. Uh, that should be a really, really fun game, providing everybody's healthy. Yeah, that's the marquee game of the year, perhaps. Right. Uh, also, whenever the Lakers visit Brooklyn, uh, sure. that's going to be obviously another marquee game. We all thought late in the regular season that it was going to be Brooklyn Lakers finals. I still think if both teams were healthier, not even 100 percent healthy, that's what the matchup would have been. But it didn't take place. And you got to give credit to Phoenix and Milwaukee for taking advantage of that and getting to the finals and Milwaukee ultimately winning the championship. But, yeah, this is the marquee game of the day and the season. And uh, look, the two biggest stars in the league going mano a mano uh, could be that preview of the finals. You've also got Kyrie with his cantankerous. I don't even know if that's the right word to use, but you know, less than great relationship with LeBron James. This is going to be a lot of fun to see. This is the didn't market Kyrie game, obviously a couple, a couple years ago said like he didn't believe in Christmas or something along those lines. Oh, I'm sure. Your- yeah. I'm sure. Well, Maybe I guess it was Thanksgiving. You know, I don't remember. Could, he doesn't like it, holidays. I don't it, know that. It could be. No, I don't think he likes holidays. I think it was Thanksgiving. I think it was Thanksgiving okay. more. Um, and again, Kyrie's a unique guy. And I think some of the things he talks about, I, I like to listen to. It's just that there's so much out there that at times you kind of tune them out. I'm sure 30, 40, 50 percent of the time when he speaks, he, he's kind of making some sort of point. Let's not forget He's part Native American, so Thanksgiving may not exactly uh, be his favorite holiday. So I can understand that. And yeah, but again, the problem I have, Sap, is that he says all these things, but he talks about it like he's the expert right, on all these exactly. things. Exactly, like he knows yeah. the most. Yeah, and so I mean, I feel like he's done a little bit of re- he's Googled something and then proclaims himself yeah, exactly. to be an expert. Oh, he's. Yeah, were you a, a big fan of Cheers? the TV show yeah. Cheers. I mean, he's Cliff Clavin, right? Just a little yeah, bit of sure. knowledge is really dangerous. <laughs> like, yeah, you could go on Wikipedia and research something and, and, you know, have some knowledge of something and sound like you really know something, but you're not an expert in that field. But I can understand that. But it, Christmas, um, again, I, I think, I believe Kyrie is Muslim. If that's the case, then converted, this yeah. is not, you know, a, a really big holiday or even a holiday for him. But, you know, there's also a chance Kyrie doesn't play because you don't know with Kyrie, he may have joined the circus by then, you know, he might be flying out of space with Jeff Bezos. Who the hell knows with Kyrie? You do want to see Durant and LeBron healthy because that is the marquee matchup in the league. Sure. And, and Adam Silver, I think it will really put the, the, the screws to these two teams saying no, uh, you know, no rest in this game. Everybody's playing in this game. As long as they're they're health reasonably healthy, you, they got to play these guys in this game. People have been waiting for this matchup. Uh, it, it's a showcase of, of of I mean, six of the best players in the NBA, six of the top 15, 20 guys, if you want to say it. You know, between Harden, AD, LeBron, and Durant, you could make an argument that those guys are all in the top ten, without a doubt. Oh, without question. Yeah, I think you're seeing. Uh four of the top 10 players in the league. And I think Kyrie and Anthony Davis uh, or Kyrie and Westbrook are just on the outside of that. And then you also got, look, I know they're way past their prime Carmelo, Anthony and, and Dwight Howard. You have eight. Sure. First ballot hall of famers that will be on the court no doubt. this day, provided they're all healthy. I mean, there's always a situation with Anthony Davis. He's not the most durable guy. Kyrie, we know isn't the most durable guy, um, but this is a game to look forward to. 
and, and let's hope that both teams come at it full strength because I know the nation will be watching this because it's such a huge day for the NBA and it's a great day to showcase these amazingly talented players and, you know, kind of gives us a little bit of a look at a potential final. Um, although it well, doesn't Zach, necessarily you- mean that much because I, I remember a couple of years ago on Christmas day, the Clippers beat the Lakers and everyone was like, Oh, the Clippers are better than the Lakers. And it turned out the Lakers won the championship in t- right. 10 months later because of the pandemic. Do, do you think that Adam Silver has a conversation with these two teams and says, make sure that your guys are good to go for this game? I would hope so. As it or, approaches, as it approaches, I, we know he speaks with LeBron James. I mean, because Le- yeah. he asked LeBron James about the play-in tournament. And of course, when that was reported, everybody lost their shit because it's like, why are you speaking to a player? Well, I don't know of any athlete in the four major sports in the history of American professional sports that's had as much influence in his sport as much as LeBron James. Like, I'm, I'm not getting into the discussion of, you know, who's the greater basketball player, Jordan or LeBron. Jordan didn't carry as much weight in his day as LeBron does now. LeBron is almost partially because like 30- David Stern was a dictator. Exactly. I mean, look, there are some <laughs> of us who think that Michael Jordan got suspended in 1993. But also the fact that you can almost look at LeBron as the 31st owner or the co-commissioner because they want to run things by him. And it makes sense. He's he carries that much weight. So, yeah, if you get the message to LeBron and Kevin Durant, who are the leaders of these teams, maybe you get it to the coaching staff. Maybe you go all the way up to the owners and say, look, this is the marquee game of the year. We can't have load management. And maybe that's why they didn't put the Clippers in there, because although Kawhi is probably not even going to play this year, there's always that possibility that Kawhi sits out because he. Uh, is the biggest proponent of load management. Right. Uh, well, here's the last game of uh, of the evening, Sap. It's going to be uh, – sorry, I had it right here a second ago. It's Dallas, Dallas going at- to Utah. Uh, this is obviously does, an interesting game. because you do get anything to see Luka. for you? <laughs> yeah, Luca. You get to see Luca. I, I thought, you know, it's interesting the reigning MVP isn't playing on Christmas Day um, in right. Nikola Jokic, right? And – Part of it is I don't think he has a high Q rating among NBA fans. I think you and I that no. love the sport and watch <laughs> it and appreciate it or like the old timers love him. Uh, he almost seems like he's come out of a black and white photo, right? Like from another time. But the average fan or, you know, a 12 year old kid that loves to watch basketball for entertainment, they're not really impressed with Nikola Jokic. They're going to be imp- impressed with, you know, Luka Doncic, who's you know got a sexy game. And Utah, you know, is a team that, look, had the best record in basketball last year. So and is it a reward for that, Sap? Is that why they're playing? Probably, Christmas? Cause yeah. Per- I, I am surprised that they didn't have Dallas play New Orleans. Uh, Zion, Luka. Sure that, That's a great the, point. The, the league definitely wants to build that into a rivalry, I would assume. Yeah, same conference, right? So they'll play each other four right. or five times a year. And it's, it's a, it, it should be a really good rivalry because their games are so different. Like, you know, Luca plays on the ground, Zion plays off the ground. So it's a it's a great contrast. Um, it does say something about New Orleans that now they're on their third coach in three years, and it just doesn't seem like they can get their act together. They they weren't able to re-sign Lonzo Ball, which I think was a mistake. I think he was starting to fit in nicely with uh, Zion. So, yeah, it is kind of a surprise that New Orleans isn't there. Instead, you go with Utah. I mean, the sex appeal of Utah is Donovan Mitchell. Is Donovan Mitchell a bigger star than Zion? I don't think so. He's a no. wonderful player, but I don't think he's got the Q right. rating. Should he that be? Zion Probably. Does. He should be a bigger star right now, but he, he's, he's not. a better player right now. <laughs> yeah. But Zion's a cartoon character. I mean, Zion, again, 12, 14, 18 year old kids, they're going to look at Zion and go, this guy is awesome. You know, because that's why he's I look a, a that's why I watch. ask you, Sap. Is, is it a reward for having the best record in the league last year? It could be on Christmas Day, or yeah. is it, you know, because I, I look at, I look at, the teams they could have played. Okay. Uh, here are the matchups I would have preferred to see. I, I said Dallas versus New Orleans. I think Dallas versus uh, Portland because Dame, L- maybe they just don't think yeah. he's going to be there, but Dame Lillard's True. a bigger star uh, than, than Mitchell or anybody or go bear. Mm-hmm. The Nuggets, as you mentioned, they have the reigning MVP, Jokic, or even the Grizzlies are an up and coming team. And John Morant is incredibly popular. So I, I'm a little surprised that they didn't try to push maybe another young star into the into the mix here and try to get him up a, a prime time uh, uh you know slot instead of going with Utah who really I mean I think LeBron said it nobody remembers them nobody nobody cares about them and frankly Seth 
even though they had the best record in the league last year, they underachieved. They didn't make the conference finals, no. which was they were expected to get to the finals, especially once the Lakers went down and they weren't able to do that. And this is kind of I, I, I don't want to call it the throwaway game, but the two least important games in this quintet are the first game and the last game, you know, because people, whether they're going to church on Christmas, you know, going to their families, whatever the case may be, uh, they're going early and late. They're kind of winding down and, and maybe they go to a movie at night. I know that's always been something I've always loved to do on Christmas is, is go to a movie. I'm not going to do that this year because I'm going to see Nets Lakers at eight o'clock. And before yeah, that, you weren't going be, anywhere. You were... I wasn't going anywhere. And before that, I get to watch my Packers host the Cleveland Browns at four 30. So I'm like, I'm all set up for Christmas. Oh, wow. day, right? I get, I get to see Aaron Rodgers at four 30 and LeBron at eight. I mean, how, what better than that? Merry That's Christmas to Christmas you. Christmas. Yeah. Yes. All I need is, you know, Roger Federer playing in a tournament and Daniel day Lewis, maybe being in a movie that opens uh, surprisingly, although he's retired from acting, but that doesn't mean anything. He can always come back and make a movie. It's not like he filled up paperwork to retire as an actor. It's not the post office or the Navy. There's two things I know in life, Sap. <laughs> you never retire from acting or being a musician or a rapper. Right. Those exactly. have the most false retirements and, and yeah. anything. You're an artist, right? I mean, if Daniel day Lewis, gets approached by Martin Scorsese and says, we'd like to do a movie together. It, it's going to happen if they want to. It's like, well, I've got to refile my paperwork to see if I can act. He's the greatest actor in yeah, the world. No. So I think he could pick and choose what he wants to do. So those are the, the throwaway games, the first and the last the first one. And the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the biggest games obviously are the five and the eight, but then you got to kind of weigh into the different time zones. So that late game, you want to try to build a, Obviously, you're going to most likely play it in, in the West because it's a 1030 tap off. You don't want to be scheduling the Celtics at home at 1030. The city of Boston's already shut down. Um, so you're going to have Dallas, which, again, you've got Luca, And then you try to pair them up with a you know a top team in the West. I mean, they, they could have very easily maybe had Phoenix hosting Dallas in the 1030 game and then have Golden State play somebody else in the five o'clock game. Uh, but I think that you bring up a great point. Like, is it a reward for Utah? And also Portland's not in there because we don't know if Dame's going to be there. Right? right. That's the big question. It's it's kind of like I think when the NFL was making its schedule back in and released it in April or May, they had to be cognizant of where Aaron Rodgers was going to play. I think they took a shot and said he's probably going to be in Green Bay. So you see a lot of Packers games that are on national TV, which they're generally a lot of Packers games on national TV because they, along with Pittsburgh and Dallas, are the three biggest brands in the league. But, you know, you kind of have to weigh into that stuff. Um, so and the Clippers that, aren't there because Kawhi Leonard's not going to play, Kawhi's, right? you would think they would also be yeah. a team that would be in the exactly. mix. Oh, I mean, Dallas Clippers at 1030, that would have been perfect. Uh, they've met the last two years in the playoffs and the games have been outstanding. The series went six games two years ago, seven games last year. And, and Luca absolutely lights up the Clippers and he's going up against two great defenders in those playoffs and, and Paul George and, and Kawhi, but Kawhi's out. Not that Kawhi, Kawhi is a respected player, right? I mean, we all agree to that. He, he's not necessarily a guy that's going to influence the ratings, but Luca against Kawhi, that that's, pretty interesting but i can't see him playing certainly not by christmas or really at any point in the year yeah the more i think about it the more i think it's it was you know utah okay you know you don't yep. really get these huge games we'll give you the you know because you guys were outstanding in the regular season last year we'll give you the christmas day game and and i also think to a degree sap these the logical game like i said would be dallas new orleans i don't right. think they trust zion to stay healthy i think they're like we're not going to oh. risk this that's the other thing. I mean, any of these players, really. I mean, when you when you think well, about it, because if you're it, playing New Orleans and then Zion doesn't play, then who the hell wants to watch that? Yeah, game? We no disrespect watch... to Brandon Ingram, but I right, mean... yeah, or or Josh Hart or whoever. I mean, they don't even <laughs> have uh, Lonzo anymore, and and so yeah, that's a great point because Zion's missed a lot of games in his first couple of years, and will probably continue to miss games because of his body type. He's just such a big, strong guy who exerts so much power that you know there's going to be some issues really throughout his career, but um, this is still an exciting slate. And again, Nets Lakers. That's obviously the marquee matchup. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody's going to, I'm sure that that game providing the teams are healthy. will do yep. fantastic numbers. And I, I mean, I hate both those teams with a fiery passion, but I'll be watching. I'm fascinated to see that game. Frankly, oh. I hope LeBron and uh, LeBron and there's a big collision at center court and they no. all are, you know, they you're not injured to the point where they can't play, but they have lost a little bit and they lose in the first round of the playoffs. 
No. Is that is that Don't a nice say that. <laughs> No. No. Yeah, and you said you depressed that the Celtics didn't win their 18th title last night in the, the rookie, you know, summer league final. Like, no. It was right there for them, Sap. Yeah, it was. They only, the they only lost by what 29? It was it was the final Man. score. They lost by like 30 points. So yeah. It was the bright lights of Vegas got to them, Sap. Just the pressure the of you know what? The Kings had have been there before and it showed and the Celtics had never oh. played for a summer league title. And so, you know, the experience matters. Oh, without question. I mean, the <laughs> Sacramento Kings who used to be the Cincinnati Royals. I mean, yep. the greatest player in their franchise history remains Oscar Robertson. So yes, n- nothing disparaging against Oscar. Cause I have him as the 10th greatest player of all time, but they really haven't had a player since Oscar. That's remotely close to him. Uh, probably right, the second, their second best, best player, player, Chris Weber, Chris Weber. Yeah. I mean, probably. Then- then Demarcus Cousins. Well, I would say Tiny Archibald because he, he, he oh, played yeah, there for okay. about Tiny five Archibald. years. Yep. And and one year he led the league in scoring and assists, which is just incredible, and didn't win the MVP. Um, yeah, but it's like Oscar Robertson, and then you know, name some other old guy. Uh, so they don't really have a great history. Uh, they do not. They certainly don't. They had their moment in the sun in the early two thousands, and even that like wasn't that great of a team. They. They were well constructed, but their best player is Chris Weber, who right. is not a top fifty all time player. No, no, he's no maybe a top one hundred, but I don't know yeah. if I'd put him in my top one hundred. Yeah, I think I probably he's would. Borderline. I mean, I, yeah, and he's in the Hall of Fame, which I think he belongs to be in there. But yeah, he's not. He's not a top fifty player. No, I mean without question. So, uh, but that was yeah, an we don't have to team. relitigate the the Kings. No, but anyway, no. Sap, uh, we can look at some of these big extensions that just happened in yes. the NBA. Um, so, you know, some of these teams are, are playing on Christmas and they'll have uh, a lot of money to spend on presents. Um, some of these guys aren't playing on Christmas, too. And so they'll have even more money to, to spend on <laughs> presents because they'll be there. Um, here are the extensions, Sap. Uh, Joel Embiid gets four years, one hundred ninety six million dollar max extension to stay in Philadelphia. Kevin Durant, four years, one hundred ninety eight million dollars staying in Brooklyn. Luka Doncic, uh, we, I think we briefly talked about this the other week. Five years, two hundred and seven million dollars. It's the biggest extension off of a rookie contract because he amazingly made a couple All NBA teams in his mm-hmm. first few years in the league, which is remarkable. Um, Kawhi Leonard, four years, one hundred eighty-six million dollars to stay in uh, Los Angeles with the Clippers, and Steph gets the, uh, I believe, the richest contract in NBA history, Sap, in terms of annual yep. value. Four years, two hundred and fifteen million dollars. I also believe that makes him the highest paid North American athlete currently. Yeah, he, this is his second two hundred million dollar contract, and and the the commonality with all these players is we're talking about five of the top ten players in the world. I think we can all agree on that. And now yeah. the league feels more like the EPL or La Liga or Serie A, uh, the professional soccer leagues in Europe, where you just if you have that megastar, you just throw fifty million a year, whatever it takes to keep that player there. That's what you do. Because all five of these players, look, they're, they're sensational players. Uh, obviously, Steph, Kawhi, KD, they're already Hall of Famers. Luka and Embiid are on a path to being Hall of Famer, although Embiid has played so few games, it's kind of jarring. But my takeaway from this, Jet, is these teams had no choice to do anything other than sign them, right? Because right. you don't find players like this all of the time. These are all franchise caliber players. So when you when you have one, you do everything in your power to keep them because yeah, it's uh, called having a team over a barrel sap is what it is. That's, that's a perfect expression, Jet. That's an old man expression. <laughs> and I appreciate that. But the thing is that you look at these five players and there's questions about durability and conditioning. Uh, Kevin Durant. Look, I think he's the second best player in the world right now behind Giannis. He's sensational is an all time great, but he's missed big parts of seasons with, whether it be a foot injury or an Achilles injury. Luca and Joel Embiid, they're not the best conditioned athletes. I mean, I don't think they're borrowing from LeBron James or Tom Brady on conditioning, to say the least. I no. mean, Luca at times looks soft. Embiid looks out of shape. They're both so talented and so gifted and, and so great that they can kind of get away with it. You also have Embiid, who's had so many injuries in his career. Just looking at some of these numbers, Jet, he's only played. Now, he came into the league in 2014, so seven years. 260 of a possible 558 games. That's 46.5% yeah, of their potential games. 
it's more likely he misses a game than plays in a game. Now I'm going to compare That's him tough. to Tom. Compare him to Tom Brady. Tom Brady has played in the NFL for 19 full seasons. He's gone to 10 Super Bowls, which is 53% of the time. More likely Brady goes to a Super Bowl than Embiid plays in a game. That, that's, that's awesome. I love that stat. Jarring. Have you tweeted that out, Sap? I will. I will. I'll, I'll yeah, send tweet it out. that one out. That's a great one. Well, it's kind of interesting because when I tweet that stuff Send out it about to Ian Brady, Blendon. He'll love that. Oh, oh my that God. He, I mean, he <laughs> probably won't be able to sit for several hours after that. But the interesting thing about that is anytime I do that with Brady, you know I'm a Rodgers guy, but I think Brady's the greatest quarterback ever. I'm, I'm not – you know, but nationally, not that I have this big national following, but everybody was like, oh, you're sucking up to Brady. I'm like, well, no, it's just a fact. Um, so, yeah, more likely that Brady plays in a Super Bowl than Embiid plays in a game. And then you look at the other players. I mean, Steph hasn't been the most durable guy. And again, he's a smaller guard. He's not quite as small as, say, you know, Kemba Walker or Allen Iverson, who were who sub six feet. Steph's six right. three, but smaller guards don't necessarily age well. And Kawhi, look, Kawhi has not been the most durable guy either. He's played, no, in not at all. And, he's played in 576 of a possible 788 games. That's 73%. I mean, compared to Embiid, Kawhi looks like Cal Ripken. So, right. That's and Luca the is the most, I mean, he's only been in the league three, three years, years, but he's been the most durable of these guys. I, I know right. you're saying he's, his conditioning is questionable, which I, I agree yeah. with, but he, he at least has been available. Yeah, he plays such an easy game, doesn't he? Like it's just he's he's his game is just it's so easy. It's easy to walk. Yeah, it's well, easy for like him to play. Sap with like Iverson or even Isaiah Thomas, the Celtics right. version of it. You knew at some point they were going to get hurt because they're so much smaller and they're crashing on the court. And, you know, nine times a game they're going to the basket. They're getting hacked by a guy who weighs 120 right. pounds more than them. Like it's inevitably they're going to get hurt. With yep. LeBron, it's almost like anything that happens to him, if he does get hurt, you're shocked because he's built like a brick shit house. Like it, right. it, it doesn't make sense that he would ever get injured. And he has been extremely durable throughout his career. Yeah. I mean, historically. So, um, yeah, so no, he's, he's... La last year being the really the only exception. Yeah, and it's tough to come back from injuries as you get older. I mean, I think in the past, if he had sprained an ankle like that, he would have been back sooner. But when you reach 36, it's tougher to come back. Um, he had the groin issue a couple of years ago, though takes the recovery times a little bit longer as much as he spends on his body. And, and I always equate him and Tom Brady because they spend about $2 million a year on their body, whether it's nutrition, uh, you know, personal trainers, and it's an investment for those guys. That's why at their advanced age, they still remain at the top of their craft. I want to see Luca start to develop that. Now he's still so young, so talented. And like I said, his game is so easy. It's very flowing, right? It's just like so pure, but to really take it to the next level and become at least maybe a competent defensive player, not a great defensive player. He's not going to be Ben Simmons or Giannis on the defensive end, but become competent there. That is more on conditioning and, and those types of things. And also want to, uh, and Embiid, look, we both love Embiid, right? I mean, he's one yeah. of the best players in the league, just a, a, a great personality, but that's a problem. He's always getting hurt. And part of that is conditioning. And again, he's a huge guy, he's seven, one, close to 300 pounds, you know, if those two guys really get committed to conditioning, <laughs> Lord knows what they can accomplish. I mean, and being, yeah, you know, if he had played a full season last year, he would have been the MVP. It's just that he missed so many games. I agree that, you know, Jokic ended up winning the award. So, but my bigger point is these guys, Credit to Jokic, Chusap, who's also doesn't look like he's in terrific shape, oh, but played every Lord. game last year. He played he every looks, game. He looks like a guy playing at the Y who's like 39 years old or 42 years old, like, playing a little pickup with, you know, some of his buddies that are past their prime. But again, his game doesn't rely on athleticism. Lucas kind of does, but, you know, Nikola Jokic's game doesn't feel like it relies on any athleticism. It's yeah, just the, like he never gets off the ground. The only reason Lucas does is because he's the primary ball handler. And, exactly. and so you see a little bit of that. But uh, here's the thing where I think with him, Sep, maybe right now he's like, I just got 200 plus million dollars. Uh, I'm play, putting up great numbers. They haven't really surrounded me with anything. When you I give know. me some talent to work with, maybe then I'll put in the work with the conditioning. Because right now he's like, I could put in a ton of work, become a better player. But, you know, he, he can't carry his team to win a championship by himself. No one does that. We've talked about this before. LeBron never did it. Jordan never did it. No one's ever done it. You can't no. win a title being the only good player on your team. And Luca is really the only good player on his team. I mean, 
listen, Porzingis is okay. Hardaway Jr. is okay. That is not a, a team, no matter how no. good Luka gets, it's not a team that can win a title. So I get frustration from his point if he doesn't want to put in a ton of extra work right now because uh, all for what, Sap? So he puts off a couple better defensive metrics. The team's not going to go any further until they get more talent. Yeah, but I, I think that's part of leadership. And again, he's so young. I think he'll learn that, okay, now I've got to set the example. Now, if that can carry your teammates to get somewhat better, maybe you beat the Clippers in the first round rather than losing to them in back-to-back seasons. Also, you know, LeBron did make it to the finals twice, pretty much carrying a team uh, in 2007 when he got swept by San Antonio, and then in 2018 when he lost in uh, four games to Golden State. He got swept both times, but right. at least he got so to the got finals with not kicked. much around him. Right. <laughs> but at least he got there, right? And I know – I'm saying, Seth, you can't – You can't win a title. You no, can't win no, it. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. No, but, what, but you can't – I mean, you can't just throw your arms up and say, I, why bother? I mean, you know, eventually you cut your fingernails, but they grow back, and then you cut them again. You can't just throw up your arms and say, well, you know, I, I, there's nothing around here. Why should I care? I no, think but you, you do what example. LeBron did. Which eventually was, which was leave which those places leave. because but then don't, he was don't take, he was tired don't of it. Take, but don't take the extension then if you're Luca, right? So at that point, say I'm just going to play this out. Although he's still so young, that for him to flee Dallas would have been nearly impossible because he becomes a restricted free agent because he's only been in the league three years, right? So now, now he's got this extension which will carry him for five years. So it'll be through year eight. At that point, he's only going to be 27. At that point, he can say, yeah. look, they just can't get their act together here in Dallas. I'm ready to leave. We thought that that's what Giannis was going to do, but Giannis stayed in Milwaukee again, set that great example. I I think if Luca and my only question with Luca, and he's one of my favorite players in the league, if Luca had Giannis's drive and work ethic, which obviously Giannis has the sky's the limit. I mean, because I think he's more naturally, talented basketball player right then then yeah I, I think you could make a case he's one of the three most naturally talented players in the league sap yeah there's there's him lebron durant probably in terms of just pure talent right like they just right like you just watch them i, I, I think those are guys that when there was like scrimmages going on the rest of the guys on the court are like holy shit how the hell did they do that I, uh, and Steph i throw is a Embiid shooter, in there too yes absolutely so th- there's another guy so it, now Giannis, who who look obviously he's skilled, talented. I mean, he's seven feet tall and he's, he's essentially a seven foot tall Russell Westbrook. But my point being a lot of his game is built on the fact that he's in great shape and that he works his ass off and he's so committed and he works on his game. And if, if Luca does that, what the hell he could be, you know, an all time top 10 player without question, but this happens a lot in sports though, right? They, and it's kind of the Tom Brady method. Like there's more gifted quarterbacks than Tom Brady, so they don't work as hard as Brady, but Brady's worked so hard that he surpassed them. You know, you, you, you do need the level of talent to do that. I, I, I kind of get turned off when people say, well, Brady's really not skilled. Well, no, he's a, a, a great thrower of the football. He's got great footwork in the pocket. And, you know, skill sets can be defined differently. Like, you know, diagnosing a defense and knowing where to go with the football is a skill. So yeah. I think that that's what you want to see from Luca because Luca's talent is just, it's scary. I mean, he, he probably is the most, talented player since LeBron in terms of just feel for the game, ability to score, do it efficiently, get double digit rebounds, be the best passer on the court. Now he's never been able to show on the defensive end that what LeBron has, but he's got that type of skill set. So if he's committed to his conditioning and, and just working harder, this guy could be the best player in the league in a few years, which I think that's going to happen. I think that the light bulb will go off at some point and, and he'll just say, look, I want to be that guy. Yeah, I, I mean, I think so too. I think everybody is just sort of waiting on it. And 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 part of what elevates you to being that guy too, Sap, just like it did with Jordan and, and, and somewhat with LeBron too, is you need to have some sort of sidekick. Of course. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it continues to be Porzingis and, you know, scrubs, then it's not going to work. I don't care how great he is. I mean, once well, in even a like while... Giannis, Giannis needed... Two other, you know, all star yeah, caliber players. Really good and players, a lot of yeah. players do. There's nothing wrong with that. You could be an no. all time great player and still need two extra players with you. I, I mean, and, not everybody is not everybody is Michael Jordan and, and LeBron James, you know. No, it's, no, that's no, a very rarefied air where you can give and, them and, one other good player and they'll compete right. seriously for a title. I mean, that's that's not very common. And sometimes you just need that break. 
right? Like, and again, I don't want to disparage the Bucks and Giannis, but things kind of fell in place for them, right? I mean, you know, Brooklyn had Durant and then a hobbled Harden and Kyrie got hurt in the series. So enabled Milwaukee to get by Brooklyn. And then they faced a Phoenix team that just for some reason didn't ever watch basketball before and had no clue how to defend Giannis, which, you know, you build the wall and, and take your chances there. And for some reason, my man, Monty Williams didn't design that defense. So you, things happened on the way that you broke right for the Milwaukee Bucks, but that's in any championship. I mean, like, go back to any recent champion. I mean, there, there's always a game seven in a, in a certain series, which goes to overtime in the case of Milwaukee, Brooklyn, that goes either way. And it, it changes right. the history of basketball, even, even the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, they had a great run, but I mean, New Orleans is up seven points in the third quarter driving for a field goal and Jared cook fumbles and Tampa gets it and scores a game tying touchdown and ends up winning. I mean, if, if he doesn't fumble and New Orleans kicks a field goal, they have a 10 point lead they probably beat Tampa Bay and it's a, it's a different result in the NFL is you don't see teams like, I mean, the, the 95, 96 bulls were the exception who just, just steamrolled through everybody. Right. I mean, they won 72 games and they had one six game series that was against Seattle and they were leading that series three games to nine. I mean, it's just, just, they just destroyed everybody. There was no ha ha moment where you said, well, if it just went the other way, they would have lost. That's where right, we are yeah. in sports now. You know, even the Dodgers were, a and it wasn't one of those year. fake, great regular season teams like Utah last year, or the Hawks no, a couple no, years no. ago. Right. You know, sometimes that happens where the best team says, ah, oh, well, you know, we'll pump, we'll pump the brakes a little bit in the regular season and just wreck everybody in the postseason. I, yeah. That, that both team just wrecked everybody all year long. That was, that was an all time team that was committed from the get go. Now the Celtics in 07, 08 were similar to that, but let's not forget their first two series. They needed game seven against Atlanta, which had a losing record. Yep. And then game seven against Cleveland, which was again, LeBron and some other guys. But then they started to write yep. the ship, beat Detroit in six, and the Lakers six in six. against but, Detroit, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the 85-86 Celtics were probably one of those teams. In fact, I know they were one yep. of those teams that just basically did whatever they wanted to. They were just better than everybody. And the same thing those with are the, the 0-1 Lakers, too, Sap, that we talked oh, about before. That's the team that I always I always go to. Destroyed yeah, everybody. The 83-76s, right? When you lose one game in the postseason, one game, you're clearly yep. better than everyone else. They even cause you to break a sweat. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I think it'll be interesting to see with these guys all the extensions, you know, how they, if, do they improve? We expect obviously Luca should, because his age keep getting better at some point you wonder, okay, is Steph, he's got four. Now he's extended four more years yeah. Are the back two years. Is he going to decline a little bit last year? You could make a case was as good as he's ever played as good as he's ever played. He obviously didn't have the help that he had to right. when he is in his MVP years, but statistically he was right on par with that. In fact, he won the scoring title. He was a little bit better. <laughs> um, so, but do you think Sap with these guys, KD, Luca, Kawhi, Steph, and Bede, four years for all of them, except for Luca, who's five. Do you think that by the end of these contracts, all these players will still be close to their primes? Or do you think that some of them, these guys are going to just paying for the front years, the teams, well, I, I should say. Kawhi, it's kind of reversed because he's not going to play this year. So what the Clippers are hoping that they get three really good years from him. Now, Kawhi is 30. He seems to be an old 30 to me. He's in great condition. He's a hardworking guy, but his body, you know, at times has betrayed him. And, and that's something that's just genetics. Like LeBron has the body that bounces back. Other guys get hurt and it's, it's a long process to get healthy. So with Kawhi, it seems to be reversed in that, the first year is kind of a throwaway year, kind of like when Durant went to the Nets a couple of years ago. You knew he wasn't playing that first year in Brooklyn, but you're right. like, well, he's worth the wait. And Kawhi's worth the wait as well. Um, Steph, that's a tough one because, again, he's 32 going into his 33 year, uh, 33rd year of age. So he's going to be like 37 when this thing is done. But again, athletes are playing longer. They're better conditioned. I don't think he's going to forget how to shoot. Right. I mean, I think Ray Allen could come out of retirement, get into a camp and still be a dead eye shooter. Now, the rest of the game is impressive and how they can, you know, continue to be um, at that very high level. Because the, the thing about Steph, Steph is the greatest shooter I've ever seen. He also moves without the basketball better than anybody I've ever seen. So that that is a concern in terms of conditioning. Uh, which he's going to be in, in top shape. But, you know, as you get older, it's tougher to do that and, and any kind of injuries too. So, yeah, I mean, I think that they're all question marks. All of these guys are question marks with the exception of, of Luca, because he's so damn young and he has been durable. 
uh, that, yeah, I mean, Embiid, who the hell knows? Again, he's played 260 games in his career, and he was drafted in 2014. That That's, right. you know, that's scary. But when he's on the court, man, he's dominant. Yeah, uh, so we'll have to see. I mean, I, I think that, like I, like you said, Sap, I mean, obviously these teams, it was a no-brainer to, to right. extend all these guys. Uh, the thing that I've actually, you know, I'm not a huge LeBron guy, though I'll compliment him when he's due because I'm not blind. Uh, the thing that he said a while ago that resonated with me maybe the most in terms of talking about basketball, and I 100% agree with this, there should be no max contracts. Right. You should be able to pay a player whatever the hell you want. If you keep the salary cap in place, that's fine. But if you want to go bananas and pay a player $500 million over two years, you know, God bless you. That should be yep. – players should not be capped as to how much they can make. That That's not right. In soccer, you see – I mean, we just saw Messi – had, is going to play for uh, PSG in uh, in Paris, and he's making like like two hundred fifty million dollars over two years. And, you know, and worth every money. penny. And, and worth the, yeah, worth every penny. penny. There, yeah. And there's no reason there's no reason that LeBron or Durant or Steph right. or Luca or you know shouldn't make that same type of money. They're Absolutely. just as marketable, especially LeBron and Durant. I mean, LeBron is you could make it a case is the most marketable athlete in the world it's either him cristiano ronaldo or lionel messi um and and so that really made sense to me i don't know Mm -hmm. why the players union doesn't advocate for that more maybe because it it might take some money away from the lower guys but i do think that's kind of bull crap that they cap out what a max contract is for players lebron to the lakers is worth an insane amount of money i mean he's making a ton of money i'm not saying i'm not crying poor for lebron james but he's get, making about like what one ninety over four years, something like that. Two hundred over four years, you could you could triple that without issue, oh. and they would Lakers would still be making money off of him. Worth every penny because uh, of not just the tickets and merchandising, but the cable deals skyrocket. You remember when the Lakers were kind of you know a mediocre team, not even qualifying for the playoffs late in Kobe Bryant's career. It was Comcast, which signed a huge deal with the Lakers to televise their games. They were going to try to tear up the deal if the Lakers didn't keep Kobe Bryant, who was a shell of himself, but they needed Kobe to sell cable subscriptions. So that's where these guys are at, because more than any other sport, like the quarterbacks, I think, deserve as much money as they can get. And I want every player to make as much as they can. It's a free market. These guys don't necessarily have long careers. The owners are billionaires. These guys are millionaires. Right. I'll always favor millionaires over billionaires, although LeBron's now officially a billionaire and he's going to own a team someday. So he'll be looking at it from the other side. But I think what you have to do in this situation is you just look at the value of the franchises. Now, Brady goes to Tampa. Since Brady's gone to Tampa, the value of that franchise has gone up 30%. I wonder why. Is there, is there something <laughs> that happened in the last, I don't know, 18 months that kind of changed that yeah him so whatever they could pay him he's well worth it look the golden state warriors before steph curry had been on about a 20-year run of being totally irrelevant he goes there and again with the help of clay thompson and draymond green and then kevin durant the value of that franchise now is second in the league behind only the knicks they built this beautiful arena and a lot of it is because of steph curry and whatever they pay him, he's worth every penny. It's, I, I just don't think people realize that, that what these guys bring is more than just, well, you know, they sell out the games. Anybody can do that. It, it's a lot more than that. Look, when Cristiano Ronaldo signed with Juventus, uh, the team in Italy that, that is, plays in Torino, right. they sold tens of millions of jerseys with his name on it. And it just look at the amount of and money that's that just that jerseys business, it's not just bobbleheads flags right. uh, socks i mean uh, everything. i mean literally every everything has a player's face or likeness on it now i mean literally mm-hmm. there's a million different products water bottles right. you name it underwear uh, phone chargers it, literally anything you could think of they monetize and so i i was saying you know earlier you know they the, the players kind of have the team over the barrel and to some extent that's true because they need the players but the teams also have the players over a barrel too, because yep. they're saying, well, this is uh, the league rules say we can't pay you more than this. I mean, if right. I'm LeBron, I'm looking at that and going, I, I know what my Q rating is. I'm worth a lot more than this. 
I mean, fortunately, the NBA lets the players get their do their own endorsements and do all their other things. You know, yeah. they're not the NCAA that's very you know litigious about well, you can <laughs> can't do this. The NBA is perfectly fine with players making money off the court, but in terms of salary, you can't tell me these guys, these top guys, aren't worth way way more. Maybe the bottom guys, you can argue, okay, maybe Grant Williams shouldn't be making two million dollars a year. Yeah, that I, that I, I could believe. Or the maximum or Ma- contract. Or Marcus Smart making nineteen million a year starting next year. I mean, I, no, again, that's, that's good, where it's a good. That's deal. a that's a very yeah very worthy contract because the value of the Boston Celtics has gone up you know eightfold since Mark uh, Marcus Smart's been there, mostly because of Marcus Smart. But um, when I look at all this, the, Joe DiMaggio, one of the all time great players, they asked him about player salaries and and you know because baseball skyrocketed in the eighties into the nineties to the point now where, you know, Mike Trout and Mookie Betts and, and those great players are making 30, $35 million a year. But of course, Joe DiMaggio has been dead over 20 years. They asked him, you know, what would your reaction be if you were a prominent player today and today, meaning in the nineties, he said, I'd sit down with the owner and say, you've got a new partner, you know, because that's the value <laughs> of a player like that is to a franchise. I mean, when you think of the New York Yankees, right, you think of Babe Ruth, like that, he, he's synonymous with that team. When you think of the Celtics, it's Russell, it's Bird, it's all those great players. With the Lakers, they've got a litany of all-time great players. So, yeah, I, I'm all for the players getting as much as they can. And, and uh, you almost get a feeling, too, Jed, on, on some of these guys. Like the league should pay them. Like Jordan, Jordan really didn't make huge money till his last few years in Chicago. You know, when they finally right. paid him like $30 million a year and he was doing one-year deals. Like the league should have kicked in. He He – he was the league at that point. No, he, he was worth he was worth a hundred million dollars a year to them. And this, we're talking twenty five years ago, right? I mean, because the TV right. ratings when he retired uh, for three years, the ratings went down like fifty percent. I wonder why. You know, so Seth, whatever he was they the most like, popular person in the world. Not he still not in basketball. It, it, no <laughs> one hears from him anymore. He's still the biggest athlete in this country. I know you, you said LeBron, and look, I, I'm a LeBron guy, but it, Michael Jordan is still the biggest brand in all of sports oh, and the is. guy hasn't played I, I for agree. over 20 years. Isn't that crazy? My, my niece is five years old. My grandniece is five years old. She has air Jordans. You know, she actually let me know that she preferred space jam over space jam too. I'll never speak to her again, but that's okay. That was yep. her choice. She's, she's a smart girl. <laughs> You've disowned uh, but her. I, I've disowned her. She's out of the will, but I, I think that that's how big Michael Jordan is. I mean, I, I was listening to Shannon Sharp today and, you know, a Hall of Fame tight end who said that when he met Michael Jordan for the first time, he was in awe of him. It's almost like he was not real, like he was, you know, off the ground, like it's some sort of godlike figure. So that's the kind of thing that, that Jordan still has in command. So, yeah, what, the league should have paid him. The league should have paid Kobe Bryant late in his career because those guys were that important to the league. And even LeBron now, if LeBron's out of the league, the ratings go down. We've seen it, right? I mean, LeBron in the finals tend to draw twice the viewers of when LeBron's not in the finals. It's tough to really gather because he's been in nine of the last 11 of them. The two we missed, the ratings were down. Yeah, I'm just saying that, like, and I think in, you obviously agree with me, Sap. The max contract mm-hmm. thing is is stupid. They're, they're is. worth more yeah. than that. They are. Yeah. I mean, that that's just the, the, the teams might try to hide the finances and stuff like that. But the amount of money that the Lakers and the rest of the league, because there's revenue sharing, make off of LeBron James is absurd. They make oh, it out, just a ridiculous amount of money off of him. Yep. But, you know, that's that's uh, that's another topic for another day, Sap. So that's going to do it for us here on the uh, Pick and Roll NBA podcast with Jet and Sap. Uh, we are presented by Full Press Coverage. You can check out all the show updates and all of our musings. And Sap's going to tweet that statistic about Joel Embiid and Tom Brady <laughs> on his Twitter at John Sap25, J O H N S A P25. I'm at Jet Stryer, J E T S T R I A R. And you can uh, find us on YouTube if you haven't already youtube.com slash jet you can see sap's new nice uh, headshot that he's got uh there and uh yeah we will be back later with a new edition of the pick and roll nba podcast with jet and sap so make sure you check that out and we'll talk to you later buddy see ya